Hello and welcome. In this video, I will walk you through the steps to register and complete an application for the FGAS Reduction Incentive Program. You can find the application portal at fripfunding.com. If you're returning to work on an in-progress application, you'll simply log in here. Otherwise, if it's your first time on the website, you'll need to create a new account first. To register for your account, you'll need some basic information about yourself and your organization, as well as your federal tax ID, so make sure you have that handy. After you register, you will receive an email with a link to set up your password before you can continue. Once you've established your account and logged in, you'll arrive at this portal page. Here you can revisit and edit existing applications or start a new application, as well as manage your account information. In this video, we will start a new application. This will bring us to the FRIP application page. Much of the general contact and organization information you've already provided will automatically populate here, so you won't need to re-enter that. Then we ask for the project manager's contact. This will be the person we reach out to if we need to do a site visit or have a question during the project. There's also space for your legal contact. If you want to copy a lawyer or someone who reviews your contracts, you can enter that person's information here. If either of these are the same as a person previously entered, just toggle and it'll populate that information instead. The next field is facility information. What is the site of the proposed project? In addition to entering the address, we want to know if this facility will be located in a priority community. To find out if the location is in a priority community, you can click the Information button above the box and then click Priority Populations Mapping Tool. This will pop you out to CARB's California Climate Investments Tool. Enter your address here and it will take you to the location. If your selected area has a blue, yellow, or green background, then you are in a priority community. Otherwise, select No on the drop-down menu. We ask for this information because in certain specific cases, there can be an increase in funding amount depending on the location. Coming back to the main application, the next thing you'll add is a project name, ideally one that is descriptive of the project. I use the site name and the type of technology. Next is the start and end date of the project. To be eligible for this incentive, all projects must be completed by the end of 2026, so please make sure you will be able to meet that timeline. Then we'll need a cost estimate of the project broken out by equipment, labor, and any other costs. Remember, this application does not need to be completed in one sitting. You can save at any time by using the Save button up here in the right-hand corner and return to work on the application once you've gathered your information. Next, we'll get into the details of the project itself, what type of systems you currently have, what the existing refrigerant is, how many pounds of charge you have recorded, the load in linear feet of case, square feet of walk-in cooler space, or tons of cooling load if you have an industrial type facility. In order to add additional rows, you'll just select the New button in the right-hand corner, select the system number, and fill out all the relevant fields. Since we already have that here, we'll just leave it as is, close and come back to the screen. You can also change information in existing systems by clicking the pencil icon that appears on the right when you hover over the row. Now that we know what your existing system is, we want to understand what it will become. These systems should be matched with each line in the chart above. So in this example, I've listed both of these as transcritical CO2 and kept the feet of case and walk-in space the same. It might change somewhat depending on your design. Finally, you will need to upload some documentation to support the information that you have entered above. The first three boxes relate to what's currently installed at your facility. Using this drop-down menu, you can select whether you'd like to provide a completed inspection form or an existing refrigeration schedule and existing floor plan. Either of these options are acceptable, just make sure your selection on the drop-down box matches the documents you upload, or you may have problems when you try to submit. If you choose to provide an inspection form, you can select this little information button in the inspection form submission box to download a blank form. The remaining documentation is required for all projects. This includes project budget costs to support the pricing that you listed above, as well as information on your proposed future state system. Engineering documents are ideal, but if you aren't there yet, a description and an equipment list will be sufficient. We will reach out if we have questions. As I mentioned earlier, this application can be saved and revisited at any time. For now, your final step will simply be to save until submissions go live on October 14th at which time you can log back in to finalize your application. I highly recommend gathering your information and completing the form in the meantime, so it will be ready to submit immediately. We have limited funding and will be allocating incentives on a first-come, first-served basis. 
If you have any questions, please reach us by phone at 833-852-FRIP or via email at info at fripfunding.com. Refer to the funding guidelines posted on the FRIP website for details, terms, and conditions. Thank you very much, and I hope this was helpful.